Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video we're going to take a look at sorting objects in Swift. In particular, we'll be looking at the sorted by instance method for sorting elements of a sequence using the provided predicate as the comparison between arguments. After a short introduction, the focus will be on sorting objects using multiple criteria, and in this section I'll show you how you can easily sort objects over multiple criteria and how to define default sort orders for your objects by implementing the comparable protocol. Before I get started, please leave a comment below if you enjoy this video, and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If this is something you want to learn, keep watching. To take us through this concept, I've created a starter playground with three pages. As with all of my playgrounds now, I use a public function that uses a closure to help us focus and keep the printout separate, and to be able to use the same variables over and over again within a page. You'll find this function in the Sources folder in the Public Functions file. There are some other things here too, but I'll cover them when I get to it. Now I've covered sorting before in an earlier video where I covered as part of my Higher Order Functions series, and I'll leave a link in the notes below. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this introduction. Here we'll look at sorting an array of simple built-in data types. For example, if we want to sort this array of integers ascending and assign that sorted array to a new property, we can use the simple sorted method on the instance of the array. And I can execute the playground, and I could loop through the array and print them out, but we can see our results right here. This defaults to sorting ascending. But if we want to reverse that sort, as we see in the next section, we have to pass in some kind of predicate that indicates that we want to sort descending. In Swift, we can pass in the greater than sign as the argument, and it also requires that we use the argument label by in front of the argument value. Now this is really syntactical shortcut sugar for Swift. What's really going on here? If I comment out this link and start again, but this time, we'll take a look at the function definition, as we see that's a closure that has two arguments, and in this case, both are ints because that's what we are attempting to sort, and along with that it throws a boolean. If I hit enter, then this is highlighted, Xcode uses the trailing closure syntax to remove the label by and provide me with placeholders for the two integers that we can provide names for. These two values are adjacent values in an array. And that's what we want to compare with essentially accepting or rejecting whether or not one is less than the other. And since they're adjacent to each other, we can name this one left-hand side and the other one right-hand side, so LHS or RHS. Then in our code block, we want to specify the criteria for which we want to sort our array. And if we are descending, we want to accept the number to the left if it's greater than the one on the right. You'll often see the removal of these two arguments and the word in by using $0 and $1 to represent the arguments like this. And this is also often tightened up to keep it all on one line. When we do this and run the playground, all we see is the final Boolean value. If we want to actually see the array, we're going to have to name that variable one more time. So here we have the three options for sorting a simple data type in Swift. I know which one I like best, but we need to understand the full version if we want to be able to sort more complex objects, and that's where we're going now. For this page, I've created a simple wine struct, and you can see it in the sources folder. It's a struct that has four properties, two of which are strings, and one is an int, and then the other is an enum that happens to represent the country code for a country, and that enum's raw value is an associated string type. I've also created a static array of wine called wines that are some sample wine objects for the purpose of our exercises. Back in our playground, I've created a simple constant called wines that is that static array of wine. So the first task then is to sort the wines by country ascending. And I'm going to want to print out the wines in the console. 
Well, we can't use the simple sorted method as we did in our previous simple data type because it doesn't make any sense. We need to be able to specify what property we're sorting on. Well, this is pretty easy. We're sorting on country, so in our code block, let's try that, and we'll use the full sorted by method, and then hit enter to get our trailing closures, and I'll name our two arguments LHS and RHS. Now, in the code block, we can simply compare the two country properties. Left hand side dot country is less than right hand side dot country. This, however, gives us an error because the binary operator can't be used against an enum. All right, then, well, let's use the raw value. Now, we can loop through each one, printing out the wine country and how about the wine variety? Okay, I can do better than this. I don't like having to specify that raw value in my sort. So if I go back to my wine source, I can make the country enum conform to the comparable protocol. Well, this gives us an error that wine.country doesn't conform to the comparable protocol. So let me have Xcode set the protocol stubs for me. And now here I can do the same thing that we did in our playground here and simply say that we can compare the raw values. Back in our playground, then I can remove the raw values from our sort predicate function. Well, the results are the same. My wines are sorted by country. However, as I add more properties in my printout, it may be difficult to read because my columns don't line up due to the different length of the different wines, wineries, etc. For this, then, I've created another public function in a special enum that I call padprint, and it simply pads the strings up to 20 characters with spaces. So back in my playground, instead of using a simple print, I'll use special.padprint. And now when we execute our playground, my columns all line up and see that though we are sorting nicely by country, the varieties aren't being sorted alphabetically. I can see that Merlot should come before Shiraz. So I want to add another comparison to have it sorted first by the country and then by the variety. First though, let's remove the arguments entirely and use the $0 and $1 syntax for our trailing closure. In this next code block, we're asked to sort our wines by country then variety. Okay, that requires a bit more thinking for our closure code block. Let's start the same way, and we're going to use the $0 and $1 to represent the left and right hand side arguments. Within the code block, then, we'll need to sort on both. And the way that you do this is that we can first check to see if the adjacent countries are the same. So if $0.country is equal to $1.country, then we move on and return a comparison of the $0.variety being less than $1.variety. And then we can return $0.country is less than $1.country. And we can use the same loop that we had before in our previous block. And when we print them out, we're sorting properly. Let's add winery to our print block and see what happens. Hmm, not sorting the way I want. George Wyndham should sort before the three Australian Lindemann Chardonnays. So that requires one more comparison. In the next code block, then, let's start the same way. We'll let the sorted results equal to our wine.sorted with that trailing closure. Within that code block, we'll create another nested loop to go one more level deep. So if the left-hand side country is equal to the right-hand side country, we'll move on and check the varieties. If they are the same, if $0.variety is equal to $1.variety, we'll move on and return whether or not the winery's left-hand side is less than the winery right-hand side. Then outside this loop, then, we can return whether or not the variety's left-hand side is less than the right-hand side's variety. Then outside this loop, we're at the top, so we can return the comparison of our country. 
So we can still use that same loop from the previous one above, and when we print it out, great. Well, guess what? Let's add one more to the print statement, and that's the vintage. The Lindemann Chardonnays are not being displayed in vintage order by winery. Now we could go on and add another nested loop, but there's a better, simpler way to handle this, and that's what we'll cover in the next page. To solve this pyramid of doom, we can use a swift tuple type. And tuples are types that are used to group multiple values in a single compounded value. And those values in a tuple can be of any type and need not be of the same type. And we've got integers, an enum, and strings. And in order to sort data by multiple criteria, we'll create the tuple in the same order that we're looking to break the ties. So we'll start again the same way that sorted wines equal wines.sorted. And then for our code block comparison, I'll create that tuple that contains all of the properties I want to sort on in that order. So first tuple, $0.country, $0.variety, $0.winery, and then $0.vintage. And since we want to compare ascending, I'll use less than, and then on the right-hand side, I'll just copy this tuple and change $0 to $1. Now I'll use that same loop that I had in the last playground to print it out with our special pad print. And when I run that playground, I get exactly what I'm looking for, a much easier way to sort multiple criteria. Well, that's easy, but let's look at this next question. This time I want to reverse it so that I can show the most recent vintage first, but everything else being the same. Well, it's incredibly easy. I don't need to create multiple tuple comparisons. Let me show you. Let's first copy the entire code from this previous example. And all I have to do is flip the right-hand side, or $1, for the left-hand side, $0, for that vintage property. Running once more, there you have it. Now, one more thing before I leave. Let's assume that this is how you are going to be sorting all the time. We want to be able to sort the wines by country, and variety, and winery, and then flip between ascending and descending vintages. And I want this to be my default sorters for less than and greater than, just like we had for those default sorts back in our very first playground page. Well, we can do this by going back to our wine struct and making it conform to the comparable protocol, just as we did for the country enum. And again, let's let Xcode add the protocol stub. And here, we can use a tuple just as we did in our first sort, only we'll replace $0 with LHS, and every $1 with RHS. And then we can simply copy this whole static function and we'll change the less than to greater than and reverse our vintage property in the tuple. Now we have our two default sort orders. So back in our playground, if I want to sort our wines with vintage ascending, it's very easy. All we have to do is say, let sorted wines equal wines.sorted. And if I copy the code for the loop from that previous example and run our playground, I get exactly as I want it. And if we want to reverse, we can add the by argument label and add the greater than symbol we've come full circle. Now you can easily sort objects with multiple criteria. I hope you've learned something. Thanks for watching.